Hi, it's Emily here from Yellow Tuxedo. This week is all about blogging. We all know that we should be blogging for our business, but do we know how to blog? Today, we're gonna to go into the ins and outs of how to create an amazing WordPress blog. Now, if you don't have a WordPress blog and use another platform, do still see what, still watch this video because there will be hints and tips that are relevant to all the other platforms. And if you want to see other um, platforms talked about in SEO in terms of blogs, do be sure to leave a comment below and I'll happily make another video on Wix or Squarespace or anything like that. Um, if you like what you see, do be sure to subscribe to our channel and of course hit the little bell for notifications every single week when we create amazing videos all about how to have an awesome online presence. Right, so you have a blog for your business or maybe you don't have a blog for your business yet and you're looking to start one. We're going to go back to the very fundamental basics of what you should be doing to blog with your business to make sure that you're getting as many eyes as possible on your website, seeing your own content. It can be the most frustrating thing in the world when you create a whole war and peace essay of something amazing that's relevant to you and not a single person sees it. So today we're gonna to go through the basic steps to make sure that the content you are creating is optimized in the way that's gonna make sure that we get people coming to see everything you're writing about. Number one, do your keyword research. Now, as you grow and as you start writing things that are relevant to you and that you want to write about, absolutely crack on, do that. However, in the early stages, people aren't gonna come and find you. You haven't grown your audience enough for people to want to come and find your, your stuff. So in the very first instance, start doing your keyword re research. Start thinking about the questions that people are wanting to have the answers to. Solve a problem, solve it by using the exact keywords that people are putting into Google and to YouTube to find, find an answer to their question. So number one, do your keyword research. We've done a video and we will post the link below on using Google Keyword Planner and how to find the best keywords for your niche. So I do suggest going and finding that and having a little bit, if you're not sure about how to find the right keywords for your business, doing that research first and then thinking about your plan for your content. Once you have your keywords, start building in those those titles for your blogs and start pithing out exactly what you want to be want to be saying to the world so that they can come and see you answer the question that people are you know, already asking on google number two make sure that you write in a way that is not, not any way that you've ever learned to write at school so write as you speak not writing in an essay format in blogs the longer the paragraphs, the more you're going to be, people are going to lose interest in what you have to say. People don't like spending time on any platforms. They want to find the information that they want. They want to get it, scan it, understand it, and get out straight away. Or then navigate throughout your website to find more information about what you are offering. So keep it succinct. Keep your paragraphs to a minimum, you know, a few lines each. Don't do massive, massive chunks of work. Do a few lines. Sometimes a paragraph might include just one word. That's absolutely fine. If that word is relevant, then that's absolutely fine. Also making sure that within that text, you are making sure that you use as many headers as you can to break up that text. As people start to scan through your work, they're gonna find the, the key headers, the key titles, so that they know what, whatever they're looking for, they can find it within the text. Number three, use relevant imagery to make sure you're including that in your blogs. It's a proven fact that blogs with images do much, much better in search than those without. It helps break up your text. It helps people understand what your text is about. They can see the relevance. And um, what I would say is when you're uploading images to your blog, making sure that they are the right optimal size, so web size, and making sure that every single image that you use has alt text. If you need to know what alt text is, we're gonna do another video all about making sure you're optimized, you're op optimizing in your images properly. Number four, linking strategy is really important when you're writing a really kick-ass, amazing blog. Making sure that you have both internal and external um, links into your post is really, really important, both to show Google that the site structure of, of your website and how that's working, what pages are important to Google to, to be looking at, and also showing that you have other image, other content that's relevant to that particular blog post that people might want to read about. They're also gonna stay on your blog for longer because they're gonna be finding out more about what you can offer. External linking is just as important. You're showing that you are offering your knowledge far and wide, that you're linking to other sources, that you're interacting with other people on the web. Number five, the nitty gritty of every single blog, making sure that you optimize your blog. Now, everyone says you need to optimize your blog, but what does that actually mean? How do you optimize a blog? It's a, it's a buzz phrase. People go, okay, that's fine. How do we implement these keywords into your content to make sure that it is actually searchable? What I'm gonna do, we're gonna head over to one of our current blogs on Yellow Tuxedo, and we're gonna really look at the back end of our WordPress um, site. So we're using Divi as our builder, so we can start to see exactly where these keywords need to be put and how you need to do it to make sure that you're giving 
is that the best possible option to be to be seen. Okay, so here we are on the back end of our website. We are using Divi Builder for our website. We absolutely love Divi. I love how intuitive it is, and I love the fact that we have the live view to be really building out our pages. So um, if you don't use Divi Builder, I thoroughly recommend it if you want to have a look at it. Now, of course, I've said this before, if you are not using WordPress for your, um, your blog or your website, that's absolutely fine. Still listen to what I have to say on this because elements of this will still be relevant to your own platforms. But if you do want me to come and build out another video for you later on on Wix or Squarespace or Create, let me know in the comments. I'll happily do a video on those platforms as well. So we're in the back end of the website. Using the keywords that we've researched and we know that are going to be searched for by our clients, we're going to show exactly where to be placing these keywords on the back end of your website to make sure that, that it's as optimized as you possibly can get. Now using Yoast, obviously we have the traffic light system, red, amber, and green. It will help you out a little bit. So use that as your guide. Don't use it as the Bible. Okay, because you will start to understand and, and recognize when things are wrong, when things are right. Um, an ideal blog um, length, obviously no less than 300 words. You know, it depends on what your content's about and what the relevance is to your to your customer. Um, probably a thousand words. Is, you, you're kind of getting to that sort of that top end of about a thousand because people start to lose interest. So you had your keyword. Um, our focus key phrase for this particular blog is 2020 goals. We've gone and done our research. We've found out what people are looking at. We've come, come and chosen 2020 goals. The first thing we're going to do is take that keyword and make sure that we're putting in our H1 header. An H1 header for the purposes of this is your title for your blog post. So that goes at the very, very top and ideally at the beginning, not the end of your title. So people can understand straight away. And more importantly, Google can understand straight away what you're trying to get out with your content. So once you've placed your um, keyword within your H1 header, we're going to come down and look at the rest of the back end here. So we're going to come down. Your focus key phrase has been set. And that's not to say you don't put other keywords within your actual body of your text. You can put as much as you like in there. However, the purpose of this is to tell people this main content is all about 2020 goals. Now, we talk, when we talk about 2020 goals, actually, Alan and myself aren't setting goals this year. It's quite an interesting one. So if you haven't um, read it yet, please do have a check out. That is really interesting. We're actually simplifying to amplify. Thank you very much, Gary V, for that pearl of wisdom. And we are looking at making sure that we focus exactly on what we want to achieve in terms of our business. So do have a read of that. Right, going back down to here. So then we have snippet preview. If we open that out a little bit more. In snippet preview, you'll see SEO title. Now, SEO title, when you think about Google, when you search, do, do a Google search and you, you have your results page, you'll always find the title of that page followed by the URL, followed by the meta description under, underneath. Now, making sure that you can get your keyword within those three elements is really, really important so people can actually see what your stuff is about and how Google can understand where to segment your stuff in terms of the entire network and the whole ranking system of all the content out on the internet, it knows what you're about and where to place you. So making sure that your SEO title has your keyword within it is imperative. Also making sure that that keyword is in your slug, your URL, and making sure that your URL doesn't have any funny, um, funny characters, any question marks, any uh, percentage marks, anything like that, taking out all of that rubbish, make sure that you have simple, um, defined words that are relevant to what you're talking about. Then going down to your meta description. Now, the, the jury's out here. People say that actually, um, in terms of SEO, your meta description isn't a ranking factor for your content. However, I would argue that if you don't write a, an engaging, relevant meta description to your post, people will still not click through to your content. Therefore, if you have a con if, if you have a keyword and you want to put it in there, you go ahead. It's going to help people understand you straight away. It's going to be something that people want to read more about. They're going to click on you. If you do not fill out your meta description versus someone who does fill out their meta description, who would you click on? You're always going to go with the one that tells you more information. So making sure that your description is a is, is, is enough for people to see, uh -huh, I understand, I want to find out more, let's go and explore this a little bit further. So that's your meta description. On the right hand side of, of the page view, we have your categories and we have your tags. Now making sure that you categorize your blog post is really important because it's, an, it's a ranking factor in terms of people wanting to search for you. It helps organize your content throughout your website. So if people are looking for similar themes, similar understanding, if they're looking for more like we have training as one of ours here, people can go there and find a bank of information all about stuff you're offering out there. Same with your tags. These are searchable tags. It helps categorize what you're talking about and people start to understand where you're going with things. 
The next thing it's really important to put is your featured image. Now we've talked about images within your content. It's really important to make sure that you are breaking up your, your text with, with visuals as well, because it helps people to just read. It's a little bit easier for them to read. However, your featured image is what you'll be sharing out. So if you're sharing on Facebook or on other platforms and stuff, that featured image will be drawn up above the URL. And it's just something a bit more visual. People are gonna to want to click through. So make sure that that featured image is placed on, on the back end of your website and making sure that the alt text is relevant to what your piece is about. So there's no point in putting alt text that's, this is a lovely picture of a sunset with us standing in front on the beach. However, if that's an industrial cityscape, that's not, not relevant to what the image is about. So making sure that that alt text is relevant to what you're trying to show people. Okay, so that's the back end of the WordPress site and how we should be filling those things out. If we actually go into, I've got this one set up here, to the, to the body of the text, you'll see, and um, it's really an, it, a good way to show you how repetition is key. Treat your readers as though they're children. Now, that's not to be patronising to your readers because we love your readers and they are the ones who are going to be really elevating you and showing your stuff to the world. However, treat them like they have no idea what you're talking about. And this is where that sweet spot comes. We talk about blogging for SEO and we talk about blog blogging in plain English, making sure that people understand your tone of voice. Now, there is a sweet spot in between to get the SEO side working for you is that you get that repetition, that keyword strategy coming through, people are starting, you're, you're being ranked at the same time as talking in a way that people want to read. There's the flow, there's the understanding, there's that, that intuition about you know, what you're about. So finding that sweet spot, looking at how we can repeat that keyword enough through the text without it being a keyword stuffed post. So in here, we have it in our title, we have it in our um, other headers throughout the piece, it's in the body of our text, and as you can see, it just repeats through through the piece without being too spammy. If you start stuffing your keywords in there, you will be penalized by Google, and it's not gonna do any, you any favors. Not only was, does it show you as being spammy, it, it makes you sound more robotic. It doesn't sound like you're, you're talking to your audience. It sounds like you're just trying to get up the Google rankings, and trust me, that's not gonna do you any favors in the long run. Making sure that you just, talk to people, people get in get out as quick as you can but really showing people what you're what you're trying to impart your knowledge about so this one 2020 goals why you should be setting goals or why you shouldn't be setting 20 get 20 goals and what kind of things can you be doing to simplify your life that's what the basis of this blog suppose about if that makes sense give us a thumbs up and we'd love to see more about that and then number six the exciting thing afterwards you've created your post you're happy that it's been keyword optimized, you're happy that you've created the back end of your website has put, been put everything in place, that your keyword is drip feeding through your content and that you are happy that the language you're using is relevant to what you're writing and the, and the intention of that piece. Um, the next thing you need to do is share it out to the world. Now, the first tip I would give you, if you're using um, Google Search Console, is making sure you resubmit your sitemap. Anytime you create new content, it's always worth resubmitting your sitemap to Google to say, hey, hi, I'm here, I've got new content, come and read me, number one. Number two, making sure then you share it out to the world, sharing on your social platforms, sharing with Facebook, with Pinterest, create Pinterest pins, um, create a vlog about your blog, share as much as you can and create that network of people talking about and sharing your content out there. With that and the fact that you are absolutely awesome and you know what you're talking about, you just need to get people to see your stuff, you'll be absolutely golden. And that, my friends, is how you create an awesome blog. Thanks again for watching today, guys. I hope it's been of use to you a little bit. If, if you haven't started blogging before and you want to blog, then this is a really good way of getting in there and starting to think about what you can talk about. Of course, if you'd like to subscribe to our channel, we'd always love that. A thumbs up's always appreciated too. And we will see you next time for another fun-filled video all about online presence.